everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to talk about tornadoes and hurricanes uh, because we're in the middle of this outbreak of tornadoes in the United States. And then a new forecast came out for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, and it's not looking good. And neither are these tornadoes. And I've created a new spreadsheet for tornadoes. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. Before we do, I want to remind you, I've partnered with Trevor Stevens. He's one of my subscribers. He has uh, a business called Forge, Build, and Design, where he does wood carvings. This is him right here with his wife. And he does all sorts of things, um, including church-related works. So you have, for example, uh, these wood carvings of Christ, which are really neat. Uh, he also has a new one for the family, a proclamation to the world, where there's these two different types, one uh, which has the entire thing engraved in it. And then he also has temples. And uh, I think that that's really neat. So you can order this and get 10% off with code Christian Homestead 10. I'll put the link for this website as well as the code in the description box below. So make sure to check that out. Okay, so we're on X. This is from Evan Fisher. And he says... 1,919 tornado warnings and counting in 2024. So I don't know. That seems like a lot. Um, here's a map showing all that. And it's uh, it has not been good. In fact, there was a tornado that hit west of where I live. And uh, I know of at least one property that's been damaged. The roof, the roof was ripped off. And uh, it's, it's not a good situation. I think there may have been another property too. Um, I haven't verified that yet. But it has not been good. And then we have this from the National Weather Service. Uh, the account Zarl says, 2024 has now seen the most tornado warnings year to date since 2011. So here's 2011. Now, 2011 was like off the charts. But 2024 is now in second place, at least as of right now. We'll see how the rest of the year goes. But uh, it's not looking good. So this is kind of alarming, and I feel like things like this are signs of the times when things become more dramatic, more serious, more um, damage, casualties, so on and so forth. It's something to pay attention to, and uh, especially when it all starts in Utah, and not just Utah, but in the Salt Lake Valley. Um, now, I understand that in the state of Utah, uh, every year I think Utah averages like one or two tornadoes or something like that but not in the Salt Lake Valley because you have the mountains there. It's, it's a valley surrounded by pretty tall mountains. That's what makes it unusual when there's a tornado in the Salt Lake Valley or along the Wasatch Front. So if there's a tornado somewhere else in Utah, it, it's not as interesting to me because that's normal. What's not normal is tornadoes along the Wasatch Front. And so you had this land spout tornado and you can see it here on NOAA's National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center. This was the first one of this uh, outbreak of tornadoes. That's weird. It's unusual. And uh, even more unusual is that from this day, which was April 25th of this year, uh, there was a 20-day streak in the United States where for 20 days in a row, uh, the United States saw tornadoes. And even more unusual is that on that 21st day when the, the streak stopped, it was the 195th anniversary of the restoration of the Aaronic Priesthood. So, and then um, it's continued since then, but it's been a little bit more uh, broken up. There hasn't been another 20-day streak, but it is continuing. Um, so I, I don't think it's, it's over yet. And uh, it's just been insane and it's really sad. Okay, so I added this to my spreadsheet called Timeline Second Coming. You can see it here in column K, 20-day tornado streak. Started on April 25th, and it went until the 15th of May. Again, that was the 195th anniversary of the restoration of the Aaronic Priesthood. And then I've created this new spreadsheet called Signs Tornadoes because as time goes on and I collect more and more information and cover more and more stories, uh, there's the necessity to start categorizing these things um, so I can easily reference it again and compare it to other similar events. So in this case, tornadoes. And what I have so far is um, the 1999 downtown Salt Lake tornado. Again, very unusual because it was in the Salt Lake Valley. And not only that, but it went into downtown Salt Lake City. And not only that, but it also went across Temple Square. 
So that was very unusual. Uh, it happened just a few months before the turn of the millennium. And then after that, the dedication of the Palmyra New York Temple, uh, which was a very important dedication. Okay, and then later in 2021, there's a tornado in North Salt Lake. And it just happened to be two days after Elder Dean Davies of the 70 passed away, who was from North Salt Lake. And he was involved in the renovations taking place at Temple Square. All right, and then later that year, uh, there was a there was a tornado outbreak in December. Uh, it was pretty violent, and uh, I never forgot this. And thankfully, thankfully, I was able to find the KMZ files to visualize it on Google Earth. So we're gonna look at that in just a second. So what happened here is at first they thought there there was a single tornado that made like a, re a really long path of destruction. They thought it was a record-breaking tornado for how long it lasted and how far it traveled initially. Uh, later, they discovered that it was actually, there were two large tornadoes or two destructive tornadoes that were E4s, and then there were other tornadoes that uh, were part of that same track. So it wasn't a single tornado. It did not break records. Um on this Wikipedia article, it says the parent supercell that produced the two E4 tornadoes and 11 tornadoes in total later became known as the quad state supercell. So that's what caused this. But on uh, this website from the National Weather Service, it shows the track. And uh, you can see it starts here, uh, just like southeast of Jonesboro uh, and north of Bay City. And then it goes up through this, uh, this little section of, of uh, Missouri right here that hangs down. And then it nicks Tennessee, and then the rest of it is primarily in Kentucky. And uh, you can see here they have the, K the KMZ files, and so I've downloaded that and put it on Google Earth. And um, I had done a video about this before, how it's really interesting how uh, a lot of people were giving a lot of attention to the intersection point of the the two paths of totality of the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse. Right. And, uh, they cross right here. The closest city is Carbondale. And, you know, I know all the things, little Egypt and all that stuff. Um, but it just so happens that this like path of destruction from this quad state supercell, uh, and it's associated tornadoes. It almost parallels the path of, of the 2024 eclipse. And, uh, it's almost centered on the intersection point of the two eclipses. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just taking note of that. That seems kind of weird, unusual. Um, make of that what you will. Uh, full disclaimer, for some reason, when you come over here, okay, you can see the full path right here, right? You see how it goes through this part of Missouri and then down into Arkansas. Well, when you, when you download these files, uh, for some reason, it doesn't include this portion of it right here that goes into Missouri and Arkansas. Uh, it stops like right here. And so I had to manually add on the rest of the path. You see this like straight line right here. Uh, this is just an approximation, uh, but it's pretty close though. Cause like I said, it's just North of Bay city. And then it goes, goes up through Missouri and Nick's Tennessee. So it's pretty close, but, uh, just, just in case you're wondering, or just so you know, um, but this is the actual KM, the KMZ file starting like right here and then going up like that. And then here's the other tornado in its track. Okay, so that's kind of weird. I've taken note of that. And then we have the most recent entry, uh, this 20-day streak. And um, this event isn't over yet. For all I know, maybe this will be a, a record-breaking year. Uh, maybe it'll surpass 2011 or maybe some other thing will happen. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, what happens. Okay, so let's move on and you know, let's talk about hurricanes. So here's the, the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season outlook. And uh, they're predicting between 17 to 25 named storms and then 8 to 13 hurricanes and then 4 to 7 major hurricanes. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail in a second. This is Dylan uh, Federico uh, from Fox 4, and he says NOAA just released their most aggressive hurricane season forecast ever. 
so that okay that's all you need to know it doesn't look good the potential the potential is <coughs> excuse me the potential is there for a 2005 or 2020 type of year be prepared okay so according to wikipedia the 2024 atlantic hurricane season officially begins on june 1st and then it goes until november 30th and for the pacific it's already started at least in the eastern pacific on may 15th there's that uh, day again i don't know if that's like that every year i'm not going to look into that now uh but then for the central pacific it's going to start on june 1st and go until november 30th um for the pacific it says on may 23rd 2024 noaa issued their outlook calling for a below normal season with 11 to 17 named storms overall four to nine hurricanes and one to four major hurricanes okay so I wanted to um, compare this to what we've seen before. So let me pull up my spreadsheet. So this is my signs hurricanes spreadsheet where I have the total number of hurricanes uh, for the Atlantic and the Pacific. And uh, it, it, it's for the ones that affect the United States. It's not uh, the other locations in the world. That'd be too much. That'd be too much work. So this is just like uh, hurricanes, the, the areas that affect the United States. So I have the total right here, and then I have Atlantic right here, and then Pacific. Um, and you can see, uh, just by looking at the colors, here's 2020 right here for the Atlantic, and you see dark colors. And that's because there were 14 total hurricanes, and then seven of all numbers uh, in a year like 2027, uh, seven major hurricanes, uh, which is defined as Category 3 or above hurricanes, and then 30 total storms, which would include tropical storms. And then the other year that was pointed out in that X post was 2005. That one, that one had 15 total hurricanes. It also had seven uh, major hurricanes, and then it had 29 total storms. So, and then you go back in the past, and there really aren't any other years that compare to those two years. And they're saying that this year... Uh, is probably going to be similar to 2020 and 2010. I hope they're wrong, but uh, it looks like that's what it's going to be. Um, so, yeah, let's just compare the prediction really quick. Okay, so they're saying, um, let's start with major hurricanes. They're saying between four and seven. So we just talked about that. 2020 and, 20, and 2005 saw seven. And then hurricanes, just in general, eight to 13. Okay, so 8 to 13. So that would be less than 2020, and then 2005 was 15. So the total number of hurricanes that they're predicting is less than those two years, although uh, the prediction for major hurricanes uh, is about the same. And then the total named storms, 17 to 25. And so that would be less than 2020, in less than 2005. So uh, I think when he says that, what did he say exactly? That this is their most aggressive, Noah just released their most aggressive hurricane season forecast ever. So that must be compared to previous forecasts, not necessarily compared to what actually happened in previous years. So, but if that's the case, you know, if in 2020 and 2005 they had a less aggressive hurricane season forecast than for 2024, then maybe uh, the logic follows that maybe this year will actually be worse than those years. I don't, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Lastly, let's take a look at ocean temperatures. So this is from Professor Elliot Jacobson. This graphic shows the years 1982 to 2022 in shades of blue and 2024 in red. I admitted 2023 to help give context for how fast things have changed. So this is North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly, uh, 2023 emitted. So here's 2024. So here it is with 2023. You can see this blue line, uh, and then the red line is 2024. So that doesn't look good. Um, you have this. This is daily sea surface temperature, and uh, I think this is just worldwide uh, rather than uh, this was, which was focused on the North Atlantic. So this is worldwide. So here you have 2024 and then orange would be 2023, right? 
And then this is North Atlantic sea surface temperature on May 22nd. So for that single day compared to previous years, that it's all the way up here, 21.9 degrees Celsius. So, and then there's this ocean heat content in tropical East Atlantic. And it shows the area that they're talking about. And uh, 2024 is in red. And so this is where it's at. So, uh, I don't know. This year has already been crazy. Uh, it's probably just going to get even crazier. We've seen pretty spectacular signs on the earth and in the heavens and in society. And just, I don't know. Uh, there really haven't been years like this. Um, when you take it all together. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.